Welcome back to the Commanders Declassified Podcast. We are officially in week one, and in week one, we are playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let me tell you a little bit about those Buccaneers that we're going to play. They were 9-8 and eight in 2023. They won the NFC South. They actually beat the Eagles in the wild card game 32-9 to nine, and then went on to lose to the Detroit Lions in the divisional game by a score of 23-31. to 31. They had three pole rollers on their roster last year. I believe they're all still there. They had Baker Mayfield. They had Mike Evans and Tristan Wirfs, all of them on offense. They had an all-pro in Antoine Winfield, and they had uh, Mike Evans as a second-team all-pro. Key offensive additions. They had a Graham Barton. A lot of Commanders fans wanted Graham Barton to be our center this year, and he could also play a little bit of guard. They had Jalen McMillan, a wide receiver out of Washington, and, of course, our favorite running back in the draft, Drum roll, please. Brr, Bucky Irving out of Oregon. He is going to play a role on Sunday. I promise you that much. Um, so those are the key off, offseason additions on offense um, through the draft. Through free agency, they added offensive line Ben Bresden, offensive lineman Lawrence Metz, guard Sua Opeta, wide receiver Sterling Shepard, wide receiver Cody Thompson. But primarily on offense, they just re-signed their own guys like Baker, Mike Evans, etc. to keep the team together to make another run at it. All right. That's who they've added on offense. That's who they drafted. Eric, you want to take us to what kind of offense they have and uh, who the key players are on that side of the ball? For Tampa? Yeah. So as you kind of pointed out, they mostly, they're mostly the same personnel wise on offense. The biggest addition on offense was of course, offensive coordinator Dave Canales left to become the Carolina Panthers head coach. And uh, the Bucks brought in Liam Cohen, who is not a member of Oasis. I look it up. But um, he is coming out of uh, he was his last season. He was spent at uh, University of Kentucky as the offensive coordinator. He's kind of flip flop between the Rams and Kentucky over the past couple of years. He was the he was in he was in um, in with the Rams in 2022. He was at UK in 2021. And then prior to that, he'd spent like four years with the Rams. Um, that said, uh, he has two quarterbacks uh, during his time there that have gone to the NFL uh, from the University of Kentucky. So that's that's fairly impressive. We all know uh, Will Levis uh, also brought in the kid last year, blanking on his name, but he was drafted. Uh, he was drafted in the sixth round, I believe, by the Patriots. So he's got guys in the NFL as a quarterbacks coach. So he he's doing something right on the college level. Um, his time two years ago with the Rams actually gave him experience with Baker Mayfield because he was kind of the guy that was charged with getting Mayfield up to speed when he came in at the very end of the season and they went on that little run towards the end of the year. And Mayfield, uh, Mayfield's resurgence kind of started a little bit uh, before coming to Tampa last year and then, you know, doing what he did. So Liam Liam Cohen's the big X factor, and it makes it a little tough to predict what the uh, Bucks offense is going to look like and do because – um, you know, we haven't really seen what he does at an NFL level. Of course, he was an offensive coordinator at Kentucky in the SEC. That doesn't really translate great to the NFL when you're a third tier SEC team. Uh, but they did score a lot of points. Uh, and prior to that, he he did work for Sean McVay as an offensive coordinator. And McVay, of course, does all the offensive play calling um, in, uh, in in L.A. So he, we, we don't know what his specific style is. I know his philosophy seems to be get the ball to your playmakers and let them make plays. Uh, which is very Scott Turner esque. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, that said, that's the coaching side. Personnel wise, you're still looking at 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 two 1,000 yard receivers and Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Baker Mayfield had a great season last year through for 4,000 yards, 28 touchdowns, 10 picks, um, and the young running back uh, uh, blanking on his name, but I'm going to get it here in just a second. Um, uh, Rashad, Rashad White, is, thank you. He had a, uh, just just shy of a thousand yards rushing. Also had 550 receiving yards. Had about five touchdowns uh, receiving, uh, six touchdowns on the ground. So very solid running back. They, like you guys said, they added your favorite running back, Bucky uh, Irving. You guys were much higher on him than I was. Uh, part of that is because he's a grown ass man named Bucky. But um, that's neither here nor there. He probably will play a role uh, in the in the offense as well. But you know, when you've got studs like Mike Evan, Chris Godwins, and Rashad White on the outside, and you've got a quarterback who has shown the ability to get those guys the ball, you know what it's going to look like. Uh, of course, Tristan Wirfs is there on the offensive line for, at that left tackle spot, protecting the blind side, and he's as good as anybody in the league right now uh, at doing that. Um, again, you said you mentioned some additions on the offensive line. We're just going to have to see what that offense looks like uh, with Cohen 
uh, run it, calling the shots there. But the big plays are going to be there because you got Mike Evans and Devin White there on the outside. Um, and, you know, we'll just have to see what the philosophy is, if they're going to lean on White a little bit more and, th- and pick their spots to throw or if they're just going to be chucking it all over the place. This is week one with a new offensive coordinator who's never really called plays at the NFL level. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But uh, long story short, Tampa Bay's offense does have something uh, uh, something for this commander's defense. So that D better be ready. That's right. Chris Godwin as well. Let's not forget that man. He is fast, even though he's often injured. Eric, real quick, before we get to Mike on how we can stop the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, are you a believer in Baker Mayfield's resurgence? Are you buying into that? I mean, he did it. He's he's had a couple of resurgences already, so he's shown the capable. Now he's capable of doing it because he had a little bit, you know, he had a, a great season to start off with after his rookie year. His second year, I think, in the league, he had a great season. His play fell off a little bit, came back up in Cleveland, fell off a little bit again. Seems to go one season up, one season down. So uh, this is uh, this, you know, if that pattern holds, then this is the start of a down season. Uh, I do believe in his ability as a quarterback. I think he's he has, you know, his his highs are very high. He can play top notch quarterback play. It's just the ability to sustain it. But that job is a lot easier when you're throwing to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin uh, and Kate Otten, a tight end, also a very reliable target. He's probably due for a jump in production this year as well. Um, so he's got weapons at his disposal. It's, you know, how well, how quickly does he mesh with the new offensive coordinator kind of tells me, we'll tell you, we'll, we'll tell the story on that, but I think his experience with Cohen, I think he can, he can maintain that high level of play. Um, I've, I'm still after all these years, uh, a believer in Baker Mayfield and he had a great season last year. So we'll just have to wait and see if he can do that more than one year at a time. But, uh, I think he can. Okay. Okay. Can't hate that. Mike, talk to us about how the commander's defense will try to stop Tampa and who some of those key players in doing so will be. Well, I feel like the defense is going to carry the team this year. To what record? Who knows? But I feel like this is a great test for week one, and it'll be easy for me to say that the key players are some of the newer players like Luvu or Bobby Wagner um, or even some of our old tried and true players like uh, St. Juice Forbes and Quan Martin. But I feel like specifically for this game, the defensive line is going to be so key because you have an iffy secondary, because you have a new defense, um, the communication may not be well. So I think the key players are the entire starters on the defensive line. Um, Farrell, um, Lawrence, or oh, not Lawrence, um, can't remember the um, person George we got Armstrong. from Dallas. Armstrong. I always mix them two up. I'm glad Armstrong's on our team now. At least I can get used to saying his name more. But, um, yeah, Armstrong. Um, and, of course, our two stellar defensive tackles in the middle, Payne and Allen, I feel like they're going to be rejuvenated playing for this new defensive scheme, this new defensive coordinator. And yeah, this is a good test because if they don't play well versus the Bucks, um, piggybacking off what he said, they have the weapons, they have pieces. If the D line isn't getting pressure, I fear for the secondary. I, I really fear for the secondary. So yeah, that's the key. Um, how well would they how them? Like I said, pressure. They have to pressure Baker Mayfield. If you give them all day, it's going to be trouble. And stopping the run. Um, Rashad White, very I'm very familiar with him from my fantasy league last year. Won a lot of titles with him last season. So don't sleep on him at all. He can put up some numbers easily on you. Um, and, yeah, if the D-line can eat, if they could feast, it's going to be a wet game on Sunday, which um, makes them even more important. Um, to stop the offense from the Bucks, So, yeah, they're the ones that's going to have to eat. They're the keys to the game, the entire defensive line. And Jamin Davis, if you want a dark horse for the game. We don't know if he's playing linebacker or defensive line. So he's a dark horse for a start of the game maybe, but we're definitely going to have to get pressure, and that all starts with the defensive line. Yeah, and uh, you talked a lot about pressure, and rightfully so. In the preseason, we showed a lack of being able to generate pressure with our front guys, and that makes me nervous. On a scale of 1 to 10, how nervous are you about our inability to generate pressure? 
I would say it. I'm like at an eight or a nine. <laughs> like to be honest with you, I'm not. I'm not worried about it because if they don't generate it, it could be problematic for the the secondary. We know that they've had their problems not only this year, but this. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, not only last season, but this year in training camp, this year in preseason. They're having issues stopping passes, rather it's deep passes, intermediate passes. We're seeing it. And I feel like if the defensive line or the blitz packages, I'm pretty sure Luvu is going to be blitzing a lot on Sunday. If they're not getting the pressure, we're in trouble. So my concern is not a nine, not only because of the inability or even the capability of getting pressure, but the importance of it. If they don't get it, it's going to be a long day for that secondary, I promise you. Yeah, no doubt. And you talk about getting to the quarterback and you got to rush him. You got to rush Baker Mayfield responsibly, right? You don't want to give up contain and let him get outside the pocket and then start making a ton of plays downfield to Mike Evans and things like that. If you're going to get there, you got to get home and bring Baker Mayfield down. He is very, very elusive uh, when you're bringing pressure towards him. So pressure him to sack him, pressure him to run. Don't pressure him to be playmaker on the run and find guys deep downfield. Uh, absolutely. Thank you, Mike. All right. Sw- flipping the field, if we will, switching from uh, our defense to our offense. So um, let's see. Tampa Bay on defense had a few additions, too. Uh, they drafted Chris Braswell out of Alabama, the outside linebacker who a lot of you are familiar with. Tyke Smith out of Georgia. I believe he's a safety. Look, they drafted big program SEC guys to make an impact. Uh, and on free agency, um, they signed Randy Gregory. His name's been around the league for a long time. Cornerback Bryce Hall, who's likely to be on the outside. Uh, Mr. Thomas, Tavier Thomas, a cornerback. Jordan Whitehead, a safety. You guys are all very familiar with his name. And defensive line, Ernest Brown. But again, their main focus was bringing back their own guys on defense. So um, with that being said, Eric, our offense, talk about what our offensive game plan should be against the Buccaneers and who some of the key players on our offensive side of the ball are. Yeah, so the Bucks, <clears throat> Todd Bowles, of course, runs that very aggressive 3-4 defense. 3-4 uh, is, is tough to run on as it is, and then you got Vita Vea over there in the middle. Makes it even tougher. That said, uh, this team needs to run the ball. Um, you, you're starting a rookie quarterback in week one, as good as Jaden Daniels has, has looked all, all offseason long. The reviews have been glowing. He's still a rookie starting his first game, and it's just bad football. It's bad common sense to just go out there and try to chuck it all over the place with him, unless you fall behind. So I think the running game is extremely important. Cliff Kingsbury, new uh, commander, uh, new offensive coordinator for the Commanders. Uh, you know he's going to have to. He's a smart guy, and you know he's got the. Uh, you know he's always linked with the air raid, um, but that's really a college offense. And in the pros uh, at Arizona, he he was he was a pretty balanced play caller. He favored the run, runs a lot of two tight end sets, which I love, uh, and I think that bodes very well for what this team has personnel wise. Uh, because on the outside, I mean, the only proven weapon you've got is Terry McLaurin, who is outstanding wide receiver. But uh, you know, outside of him, you've got Deami Brown, who has yet to show up in, in the regular season consistently. Um, and then you've got, you know, James Crowder, whose best years are, are you know, probably in the past. Um, Byron Pringle, who's never really been a top flight receiver. You just brought in the kid from Houston. Is he up to speed yet? So there's there's a lot of question marks on the outside is what I'm getting at. So I think the tight ends are going to have to be a, a very big deal. Uh, Zach Ertz, John Bates, Ben Sennett, uh, maybe even maybe even our guy Colton Yankoff. Maybe he shows up. Maybe he suits up for the, his first game. Who knows? Uh, but I think a lot of a lot of two and three tight end sets. Heavy doses of Brian Robinson Jr. I think the screen game is going to be big. Um, you know, they've got, you know, Tampa Bay doesn't, their linebackers don't scare me as much as they would have uh, pr- prior to this year. Levante David's still back there. Uh, he's a, a poor man's Bobby Wagner. He's a super underrated linebacker. Getting a little long in the tooth, but he's still bringing it every year. So he's an outstanding linebacker. Outside of that, they've got young guys. They lost Devin White to Philly. Uh, so we'll see what we'll see what happens uh, on there, but I think the screen game is going to be big. Austin Eckler uh, and Brian Robinson Jr. in the screen game uh, are going to be big. There's going to be a lot of a lot of passes for those guys, a lot of passes to the tight ends, and maybe some deep shots if you can get them to Diami and Terry. 
if all's going well, if, if this team falls behind, commits a turnover or two, and ends up down 14 points, that is not an optimal situation. But we're going to find out what Jaden Daniels is made of if that happens because he's going to have to be chucking the ball all over the place. But I think Cliff Kingsbury is going to scheme it up, uh, and I think our defense can hold up uh, reasonably well against that powerful offense that it will be. it can be a tight game. Um, and, you know, Cliff's game plan, he can stick to his game plan, which I think is uh, 55-45 run pass. Uh, and a lot of short and passes to the outside if possible. Yeah, yeah. And they got Antoine Winfield, Winfield on that defense, man. He's playing center field He's, back there, and those deep shots better be accurate. But Jaden yeah, throws a good deep man. ball. Yes, he does. But that man is an all pro. Let's not yep. sleep on that. So, Cliff, be smart, please. All right, Mike, talk to us about Tampa Bay's defense. Uh, same thing. Key players and how you think they'll try to stop our Cliff Kingsbury-led offense. I mean, well, let's start off where y'all left off with Antoine Winfield Jr. Um, we we're very familiar with his father, so I'm growing up um, just as equally monstrous in the secondary as his son. Um, led Tampa last year in the PFF grades. I think it was a, um, over 91 for the season. Um, also, I heard that you say that Washington's going to need to run the ball, and I wholeheartedly agree with that, Eric, but there's a problem. The Bucks ranked eighth third since the run last season. And they know that we're going to want to run the ball with a rookie quarterback, two running backs. That's capable, very capable. You know that um that Washington's going to run the ball. Tampa is good at stopping the run. So I think in order for Washington to have some success on offense, they're going to need to pass the ball. But Tampa is good at defending the pass too. Top 10 in the league at that as well, I believe, last season. Uh, we're talking about a team that's very battle-tested. Um, they shut down Philly in the playoffs, so to speak. Um, they they made life hell for Bryce Young last season. And I know a lot of teams did, but them specifically, um, I'm pretty sure Bryce Young after the game was like, man, I'm at, what did I get myself into if I got to play this defense two times a season? But um, as far as the rest of the defense, like, name them. You've all named them so far already. Um, Vita Vaisman mentioned. He was um, among their top five at um, in the PFF grades. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't hear his name. K.J. Britt. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, Britt. K.J. Britt, linebacker. He was among the top five on their PFF grades. You know who wasn't on the top five of their grades? Arguably their best player, in my opinion, Levante David. I know he's getting up there in age, but he's still Levante David. Levante David. If, right. If we can um, have hope in Bobby Wagner, why the heck shouldn't they have hope in um, Levante, who's still in his prime? In opinion? Yeah, he has an up and down season right now, and then he's not um, um, who, like Luke Keekley or a great like Lewis or them, but. In this league, he's a top five linebacker, in my opinion. And like I said earlier, with the game being messy, that's something you're going to start hearing more as the days come, that that game will be rain, very, very rainy and humid, um, humid too. So both defenses, they used to have advantages in the rain games, but I feel like the offense has a slight advantage now because of the rules um, that's been adjusted. And I think Tampa's going to take advantage of that. And I'm not going to say they're going to shut Washington out, but you can't run against them. It's going to be hard to throw against them in the rain. Like, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's just the situation we find ourselves in this week off the break. Yeah. And I've, I've watched plenty of games last year with Tampa where Jamel Dean, their cornerback, got picked on. By better quarterbacks, right? Um, and so hopefully Kingsbury identifies that matchup as something that we can win with Terry and others, and uh, I'd love to see them pick on him a little bit. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, and I just want to add one more thing um, as far as, like, how they can um, – what's the word? Um, tangibly stop the defense, and that's just stop whatever momentum Washington is creating. If they get a good play on first down to get another um to get another first down, you have to make sure that they don't build on that with a young quarterback and just a very mysterious offense. Any momentum that the Bucks can obliterate early or often will be hell for us. 
Right. And I'm not sure. Absolutely. All right. So um, there you have it in terms of information about both teams and strategically how they're going to approach this game. Eric, give me one player, one player, offense or defense, but only one from either team that you think is going to be the difference maker in this game. Tress Way. Really? Tell Mike me said it himself. The weather. If the if it's a bad weather game, if it's a sloppy, rainy game, field position is going to matter, and Tress Way is going to make a huge difference. Okay. Kind of boring and lame to pick the special teams guy, but uh, it matters, and he matters, and he's a good one. He is indeed. Mike, who's your one player that will make all the difference today? Or he's been a sure. nightmare. No school, I understood. He's been a nightmare since he came to the league, specifically for Washington. I remember the first game he played versus the um, Redskins back in the day. Seven catches, over 200 yards. If you remember that game, if you remember the player I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. Mike Evans, man, he terrifies me. He was A.J. Brown before A.J. Brown. Like when he plays Washington, I could I could picture him licking his lips. Like, and this is with good secondary play. He still used to cook us. So yeah, that's one person I feel like can easily take over this game. And again, with the rain, I'm gonna keep mentioning it because everybody's gonna start talking about it um come Wednesday. But it, it does give a better, I mean, I feel like receivers do have a better advantage now because of the um, way the defenses are allowed to play, or not allowed to play, I'm sorry. And, yeah, if he's one-on-one with four with no help, like, what do y'all think is going to happen based on the pass? Again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's going to be real in these streets on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And I, you got to ask yourself, who's covering Mike Evans on Sunday? that has shown the capability to cover Mike Evans on Sundays. I can't give you a name yet. So it's going to be interesting. Um, my player is Cade York. I mean, you guys mentioned it plenty. The weather is going to be iffy at best. And I think keeping the ball on the ground is absolutely the right idea for both teams. Todd Bowles is a defensive co- uh, head coach, and he's an aggressive defense, which means he's risk adverse on offense, generally speaking. So I think Tampa's going to keep the ball or take the air out of the ball, try to run some clock and just get out of there with a win because I think Tampa thinks that they're a better team than what we are right now. And so I think they're going to just ground and pound us and see what happens, which means that this could be a battle of field goal kickers. And I think Cade York better make every one of his field goal attempts out there on the field or we're going to be in some deep trouble. So, all right. Eric, give me your prediction for this game. What's the outcome here? I like this question. My favorite part of the week. Now, we are, we've we already laid out that uh, all of the talent Tampa Bay has on both sides of the ball. They brought back most of their talent from last year. The outstanding wide receivers, the, the stud young running back, the quarterback who had a resurgence, the defense that was number 10 against the pass and number eight against the run or vice versa, whatever like that. Despite all of that, that team went nine and eight last year. So I it don't I'm not I don't think they're unbeatable because they have a tendency to play to the level of their competition. They tend to lose games that they could win, uh, and they end up being a team that hovers around 500. And that's kind of been the uh, hallmark of Todd Bowles type teams throughout. So uh, I definitely give Washington a chance to win, and that is why I'm going to pick Washington to win. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jaden Daniels getting his first win. Uh, it'll be a signature win, but I think that um, I think Brian Robinson gets two short touchdowns, uh, and I think it is a I'm going to go 27-23 victory for the good guys on the road I'll week take, one. I, I will take that. Mike, what do you got? What do you think the, the game is going to be this weekend? How do you think it's going to turn out? Hmm. Washington has surprisingly done pretty well in week one games over my lifetime. I feel like it's the rest of the season they tend to struggle with. Hell, last year, Washington was 2-0. and We was partying and up with this, Drake. <laughs> and they're the last 15 games after. But as far as week one, um, I'm going to go with the spread, man. I think Tampa, they get us out of here about four. Um, it's 
it's just a lot of unknown factors. I just don't feel right predicting Washington to win. Of course, everything looks nice on paper. We see the social media clips where everybody laughing, smiling. They working hard. They shutting each other down. They getting praise from the Jets and the Dolphins when the Jets and Dolphins are clowning other teams. Like it's everything's going too well for Washington right now. But again, that big factor, that hurricane, that weather that's coming to Tampa Bay, it will play a factor. Um, I just feel like the home field advantage is week one, the crowd going crazy. They probably get us out of there 17-21, but we feel good hitting, uh, coming back home to destroy the Giants. Spoiler alert, I'm picking us to beat the Giants next week. I'm, mm -hmm. we're, we're destroying the Giants week two, but before we get there, we, we may have to hold it ill, and that's okay. Yeah, I think – so, like, if you look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last year, they were a team of runs. They'd, lose, they'd win a couple, lose a couple. Win a couple, lose a lot. Then win a lot. Then lose some more. It was so weird. Like, they were very Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde last year. So, it really kind of depends how they start. They barely got by the Minnesota Vikings in week one last year. I think – I think that the commanders are able to sneak this one out. I'm going to give them a two-point advantage. I think the weather will be a factor. I'm going to say 23-21 commanders. Um, got to make those field goals, though. And I think it's going to be a Brian Robinson versus, and uh, Austin Eckler versus Rashad White game all day long. All day long. And Bucky Irving as well. So it's going to be the two running backs from each team that are going to really, really um, be the main factor in this game. Um, and so – I like us in that department, though. I think if we can commit to running Brian Robinson downhill uh, and then popping Eckler out of the backfield on little flare passes, things like that in the backfield, to counter that aggressive blitz from Todd Bowles, because if you can anticipate the blitz, there it leaves a lot of holes in Tampa Bay's defense. Tampa Bay just overwhelms you with pass rush pressure until you give in. They did that to the Eagles. They bring it. Todd Bowles is always going to blitz on third downs, Cliff Kingsbury. It happens 90% of the time, it seems like. He's coming. It's just from where and with whom. Have an outlet everywhere so that, that Jaden Daniels can make the plays. And then if Jaden Daniels decides to use his legs, that will also be a deciding factor. I think we have two paths to win the game. That's why I'm picking us. We're going to go over this one, 23-21. The good guys get the win here, and we're 1-0 to start the season. All right, listen, if you are still here, subscribe. Recommend this podcast to your friends. If you like informative football conversation, this is the podcast for you. Tell your friends to tell a friend. Otherwise, Commanders Declassified, we're out. And good luck, Commanders. Let's get that W.